We're here live at the DNC Forum with Jammu Green, Hello. Fox News analyst. I know Jammu because we're always fighting with the fascists on Fox News that show up and Republicans and some good-hearted Republicans. So Jammu, you just stepped into the race. Yes. What inspired you to do so? Well, certainly the results of the 2016 election. I think though I also sat back and I watched this field develop and I was waiting for the same energy and passion that we're seeing from the thousands of women who have decided to run for office, the thousands, you know, hundreds of thousands of women who are going to march on January 21st and hoping that we would be having a field of women and thank goodness that now we have two women in the race, but it's not just about gender parity in this race. I think it's also about a diversity of experience, a diversity of ideas, and the party has been basically selecting its leadership from the same base of experience, from the same um, system that having come up through, whether it's the state party system and being a big D from the time you're a young Democrat to the time you're a state party chair, we need people who have come in the party, left the party, agitated against the party, founded progressive organizations, worked in partnership with the party, helped to amplify voices by putting women and diverse candidates in the pipeline. And that is all of the things I've done. And I sat back and I looked and waited and didn't see a candidate with that diversity of experience, with those ideas that were going to be disruptive. And after the 2016 election, we don't have the opportunity, the luxury, to wait. There was this moment, I actually tweeted it out, where you were talking about how there are a lot of young people who have wanted to get involved in the party in the past, and often at the state level, yeah. uh, they're not included, and then they never come back. I heard, I've heard that as, as, a, as a former YD. I was a former young Democrat, and I saw a lot of my friends leave the party that were active Democratic parties. What are you going to do to change the culture, and it's not just the culture at the national level, but the culture at the state level, uh, so that we get rid of that, whatever that is that's, that's creating that problem. Well, I think we have to start by calling it like it is. And a lot of the conversation today was about clearly, because we're running for chair of the DNC, what happens at 430 South Capitol in Washington, D.C., but there needs to be accountability at the state party as well, because in Texas, I was a Texas Young Democrat. I happened to actually be executive director of Texas Young Democrats. I sat in the state party and saw and heard some of the most like uh, anti-democratic values being expressed, had to fight against people who I thought were supposed to be my allies, and I packed up my Datsun 310, left the state of Texas, got to DC with $10 in my pocket, and went into nonprofit organizations and, and decided that was going to be my way of organizing. But luckily, I was able to find my way back to the party because of opportunities that people gave me by opening up doors in a way that didn't happen at the state party level for me to go into the DNC and build a program from the scratch to like really bring in young women into the party for the first time. That, that is something that should happen in the state party. It can't just happen at the DNC level. And I think we're too afraid too afraid. Certainly in the conversation we just had, I think we have six weeks left in this election, but it doesn't have to, it can't only be what does the DNC need to do to be more diverse, to be have more transparency and be more accountable. It is also what state parties have to do because they are the front lines of opportunity and front lines of defense of making sure that we do not lose that early energy and passion from young people who are being turned away. If the state parties are funded more, do you think that'll help the culture shift? <laughs> well, there's a lot of conversation about money. Money this way, which contract, we're not going to sign this contract, and it's always about money. And I think that is the absolute wrong place to start. We live in a world where you can start an organization, build a movement with very little resources. And yet we have the same conversation happening between the state party and the DNC and the fighting over money. And clearly there's a conversation that has to happen about just the role of money in politics. And I think we talked a little bit about it, but didn't go as deep as we should. But we have to get away from only seeing the relationship between the DNC and state parties as being financially based. 
if we're bringing in the type of energy and I think the type of new voices and allowing them to build their efforts, we're going to see opportunities that are innovative that don't cost the same amount of dollars as we're talking about in these elections. We have to remember, Donald Trump spent less than all of his opponents in the Republican primary. He spent significantly less than Hillary Clinton, and he won. We can win without the conversation starting and ending about money. Jamu, uh, you know, you're not just speaking to the party. You're speaking to these members, and a lot of these members are those party members that have been there. Some have even said, nope, you can't run for office until you start at the bottom or kiss my ring. How are you going to convince a lot of these people? And not, it's not all of them. You know, there's, there's a diversity of membership. How are you going to convince some of the old guard that has been there for a long time and doesn't see anything wrong? How are you going to convince them that, that your ideas are the ones that are going to move the party forward? Well, I certainly think that my experience is going to be an opportunity to start a conversation with them. There are many members, I worked at the DNC 20 years ago. There are many members at the DNC right now who were there when I was a staff person and they are still in control of their little piece of the pie in whatever area that they are from. And I know that they started their activism within the party because we all have shared values. We all agree on the type of country we want to have, the type of values that drive us to get engaged in this work. We are all evangelists for good. And someone in leadership has to have a very hard conversation with these members about how they need to find new ways of giving and participating to allow those new voices in. It's not an easy conversation to have. And I think a lot of times the debate within leadership for the Democratic National Committee is about easy conversations. And so the experience that I bring to the table is I welcome difficult conversations. I welcome those conversations at Rock the Vote. I welcome difficult conversations clearly at Fox News. I don't shy away from it. It's not necessarily going to make everyone my best friend, but it is certainly going to outline a path forward for how we can actually accomplish real change. And there are some who are going to completely dismiss it, and that's not who I'm trying to talk to. I'm trying to talk to that person who remembers why they got involved, how they got involved, the challenges that they faced, and really can embrace that that same opportunity has to be given to someone else. Thanks, Jamil.